time to talk about the development of China's fifth generation carrier fighter, the J-35. It's expected to be deployed on the Type 003 aircraft carrier, the Fujian, and to form the core of Chinese naval aviation over the coming two decades. In fact, it's a critical piece of Chinese naval modernization. Alongside China's air warfare destroyers, its nuclear submarine forces, and the aircraft carriers, the success or failure of the J-35 will determine, at least in part, whether Chinese carrier groups can match a U.S. carrier force in the open ocean. And from its humble beginning and unpromising starting point, the J-35 has come a long way in becoming the leading candidate for the PLAN's fighter forces. The story began in 2012 when the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation was developing a stealth fighter to be a contender for the PLA Air Force's fifth-generation fighter. The plane was designated the FC-31. Shown here is one of the early models. It was entirely a self-funded project by the developers. However, it was ultimately unsuccessful, and the Air Force chose to accept the J-20 Mighty Dragon instead of the Chengdu Aerospace Corporation. However, Shenyang did not give up on the FC-31. It continued developing the plane throughout the late 2010s. Aiming for the exports market, it continued to display the FC-31 at the various air shows around China, hoping to attract foreign customers. In the end, it turned out that Shenyang actually had another plan for the FC-31, one no less ambitious than the role filled by the J-20. Around 2018, the PLA Navy was deciding on a future fifth-generation carrier fighter. The main contenders were a navalized version of the J-20 and a derivative of the FC-31. The J-20 appeared to have been rejected on various grounds, partly because it was a large fighter that would limit the number of aircraft on a carrier. The J-20's developer Chengdu Aerospace also had no experience in developing a navalized carrier fighter. The FC-31 was chosen instead to be the PLAN's future carrier fighter, partly because of Shenyang's experience in developing the J-15 carrier fighter. The navalized FC-31 is now widely referred to as the J-35 or the JXY. By the PLA watching community, the J-35 made its first flight in October 2021. In late October, the first images of the aircraft in flight were circulated online. You can see them here, but the image resolution and quality are low, deliberately. A clearer photo of the first J-35 in the air was available in November of that year. With the plane coated in a green anti-corrosion primer paint, this image gave several important clues to the aircraft's future. A catapult hook was attached to the nose landing gear, showing that the plane is designed for taking off from a cattle bar carrier. A fold line can be seen on the wings. The two features confirm categorically that the plane is intended for carrier deployment. In July 2022, a photo of the second J-35 prototype emerged on the Chinese internet, and of a much higher quality than the previous photos. In the image, you can clearly see what appears to be a flying shark logo on the vertical stabilizer, similar to the logo on the PLAN's J-15 flying sharks. This provides further confirmation of the J-35's naval role. The other important detail is the serrated exhaust nozzles on the engines. They point to a domestic engine being used on the J-35, known as the WS-13, whereas the predecessor, the FC-31, was powered at least initially by Russian RD-93 engines. In January 2023. A new photo of the latest J-35 came into light. 
the new version has modifications to the airframe to improve aerodynamics and flight performance, and to increase the interior space for things like fuel and weapons. China's Air Force has integrated a fair amount of Russian technology in the past, and the RD-93 engine is just one example. The PLA has adopted the airframe of the Russian Sukhoi fighters, also known as flankers. One mystery has been the design of the canopy on the new prototypes. The J-35 has a front opening canopy with an integral bulkhead at the rear. This leads to practically zero rear visibility for the pilot, and this is similar to the canopy of the American F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The F-35's canopy design is partially a compromise linked to the need to accommodate the machines needed to enable short takeoff and landing on the B variant, the F-35B. There's no indication that a Stovall variant of the J-35 is going to happen. The earlier versions of the J-35 had a canopy that offered decent rear visibility, but the new version evidently does not. So what explains the change? Why suffer the loss of rear visibility? While the large bulkhead behind the J-35's canopy may be extra fuel storage, maximizing the fuel load is a critical design consideration in a carrier fighter, and maximizing the internal fuel is absolutely crucial for a stealth aircraft. To carry an external fuel drop tank would compromise the fighter's stealth. Furthermore, as a twin-engine fighter, the J-35 would be heavy on the fuel consumption. So taking all these factors together, it's imperative that the J-35 carries as much internal fuel as possible. With this in mind, it makes sense to sacrifice rear visibility in return for extra fuel storage behind the cockpit. In general, modern fighters have much better ways to ensure battlefield awareness than the human eyeball. So the loss of rear visibility is not really that much of a big deal. The J-35 has the necessary features to achieve a high level of stealth, a key requirement for a fifth-generation fighter. It utilizes several tried-and-tested techniques to remain hidden. Similar to the J-20, the J-35 has a high level of edge alignment. This means the edges on the airframe, whether that be the wings, the control surfaces, or the fuselage, are aligned to as few angles as possible. This minimizes the level of specular return, which occurs when the radar waves hit the plane's surface at a 90 degree angle, returning the radar wave directly to the transmitter, and thereby revealing the fighter. The edges of the plane's surfaces are painted in radar absorbent coating. This ensures that radar diffraction, the scattering of radar waves, can be kept at a low level, while directly absorbing some of the wave. There are no spherical or round surfaces, which avoids the occurrence of creeping waves. Of course, like all the other fifth-generation fighters, the J-35 has a large internal weapon bay in the ventral position, that is to say, below the fuselage. It carries the fighter's primary weapon, the beyond-visual-range air-to-air missiles. Reportedly, it will have the same armament as the J-20, which are four beyond-visual-range air-to-air missiles inside the weapon bay. Indeed, all of the stealth features mentioned so far are very similar to the J-20, which shouldn't come as a surprise. There are only so many ways to design a stealth fighter, and it is only natural that you will find similar features across all of them. However, unlike the J-20, the J-35 does not have a pair of the smaller side weapon base or lateral weapon base. The J-20 uses these to carry the short-range dogfighting missiles. The J-35, lacking the side weapon base, will need to carry the short-range missiles in the ventral bay. 
which of course would take space that could otherwise carry more long-range weapons. The J-35 would be unlikely to carry missiles in its external hardpoints, because that could compromise the fighter's stealth. The engines on the J-35 prototypes have been seen with a serrated nozzle. You can clearly see this on the fighter in this photo right here, dated July 2022. These engines appear to be a new variant of the WS-13 turbofan engines that power the J-35. The serrated engine nozzles enhance rear-facing stealth, reducing the radar reflection and helping to reduce the infrared signature from the heat of the engine. The J-35 meets the stealth requirements of a fifth-generation fighter. It is possibly not at the cutting edge of aircraft stealth, because it still lacks a couple of advanced features, which I will discuss later. The Shenyan Aircraft Corporation is working to develop these. The main armament of the J-35 was confirmed at the Airshow China 2021 in Zhuhai, a city in the Guangdong province. This time, a full-sized model of the fighter was displayed together with the PR-15E Beyond Visual Range missile. To be clear, this weapon is designed for export, and is already in use by the JF-17 of the Pakistan Air Force. However, this strongly suggests that the proper J-35 in Chinese service would be using the PR-15, China's most advanced and most lethal beyond visual range missile. It is guided by a combination of inertial guidance, satellite navigation, data link, and ASAR radar seeker, and propelled by a solid fuel rocket motor. The effective range is around 200 kilometers. Four PL-15s will be carried in the J-35's internal weapon bay, the fighter will also be using the PL-10 air-to-air missile for short-range dogfights. The PL-10 is China's best within-visual-range missile, with an infrared imaging seeker that identifies the target based on shape. This provides a long target detection range, the ability to lock onto the target from the front rather than just the engine and high resistance against decoys that are traditionally used against infrared seekers, such as flares. Both of these air-to-air -air weapons are used by China's advanced fighter planes, including the J-20, the J-16, and the J-10C. The J-35 will also have a medium-range precision-guided glide bomb, opening up the possibility of ground and naval attacks. However, the primary role of the J-35 is expected to be combat air patrol, owing to inherent limitations for the internal weapon bay to accommodate large diameter weapons, such as anti-ship missiles. At present, it remains unclear if the J-35 will carry a gun or an auto cannon. In this day and age, aerial combat is likely to be decided overwhelmingly by air-to-air -air missiles, so I wouldn't be surprised if the J-35 does not have a cannon. A gun can be useful in certain situations, but most of these can be resolved by missiles or other guided weapons. In terms of sensors and avionics, the J-35 is very likely to be equipped with a derivative of the same suite as the J-20. The J-20 and the J-35 have gone through a substantial period of overlapping development, so it is no surprise that both aircraft would end up employing common subsystems in general, including radars and other sensors. The J-35 has a large radar housing an ASA fire control radar, it will also have passive electronic support measure systems, including a radar warning receiver and a missile approach warning system. It should also have an electro-optical detection system, providing a 360-degree coverage, an electronic warfare system, and an electro-optic sensor on the chin, similar to the diamond-shaped sensor on the J-20. 
The J35 will also possess robust data linking capability, with a focus on integrated warfare in which the J35 is only one part of a system of systems. The J-35 will have to work alongside elder Chinese naval aviation assets, such as the J-15 and the KJ-600 early warning system. Currently, the J-35 prototypes are powered by the WS-13 engine and its several derivatives. We've already talked about the version with the serrated nozzles. The WS-13 is based on the Russian RD-93 turbofan, albeit with modifications. The early version of the WS-13 is not really that much better than its Russian predecessor. However, China has incrementally improved the WS-13 engines over time. The latest edition of the WS-13, the WS-13E, has substantive improvements over the RD-93. Compared to the Russian engine, the WS-13E has higher thrust, better reliability, and is visibly smokeless, whereas the Russian engine tends to be smoky. The J-35's predecessor, the FC-31, was powered by the RD-93 engines. But as the domestic WS-13 engines improved to a level exceeding that of the Russian engines, the WS-13 was used on the J-35. However, the WS-13 is only a stopgap measure for the J-35. It is still missing certain features to enable the full suite of function for a fifth-generation fighter. These include the ability for 3D thrust vectoring and super cruise. Chinese engineers are developing the ultimate engine for the J-35, with a somewhat uninspiring name of WS-19, which will possess all the aforementioned functions, and will also provide greater thrust than the WS-13. In particular, super cruise provides key advantages for stealth, because it allows a fighter to sustain supersonic flight without using afterburners. The usage of afterburners should be avoided in a stealth aircraft, because the plumes reflect radar signals and create infrared signature. The WS-19 will provide that key function for the J-35. The development of the WS-19 is likely going hand-in-hand -hand with the WS-15 engines being developed for the J-20. The development of both engines will be benefiting from each other. The WS-19 is expected to take advantage of key technologies and advances made in the WS-15 project. It is conceivable that both engines will finish developments at around the same time, and enter production around the mid-2020s. Consequently, both of China's fifth-generation fighters should see a large power spike at around that time. As a new fifth-generation fighter, the J-35 will be fitted with the most advanced avionics, weapons and engines. It should match or even exceed the F-35 fighter in many respects. China is already at the cutting edge in radar systems, having already ventured into gallium nitride semiconductors for radar technology. Chinese engineers already had experience in sensor integration on the J-20, and should be able to apply that experience to produce an air combat system comparable to the F-35. Chinese beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles like the PL-15, are widely viewed as highly dangerous weapons. The one area where China is lagging behind America is in fighter jet engines. But as we have already explained, the country is making steady progress to address the weakness. Once the J-35 has the WS-19 engines installed, it will become a fierce competitor to the F-35. Compared with the F-35C, the J-35 with two WS-19 turbofans can achieve a thrust of 24 tons, while the F-35C with a single engine has only 21 tons of thrust. The J-35 has an empty weight of only 14.5 tons, 
while the F-35C is higher at 15.7 tonnes. So the J-35 could be expected to have a larger thrust to weight ratio than the F-35. In terms of combat load, Chinese sources claim that the J-35 will be better than the F-35C and will be able to perform more functions as a result. The J-35 will be a key component of Chinese naval air power. It will find a home on the Type 003 aircraft carrier, the Fujian, which will feature aircraft catapults and future catapult-equipped carriers of the Chinese Navy. Additionally, one key consideration will be whether the J-35 is also capable of operating from the PLAN's ski jump carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong. The ability to operate the J-35s from these two carriers would greatly enhance their combat potential, as well as their longevity as a naval asset. Important milestones for the J-35 in the near future will include the first land-based launch by aircraft catapults and arrested landings, and possibly ski jump launches for integration into the Liaoning and the Shandong Stobar carriers. Looking further ahead, the J-35 will need to make the first takeoff and recovery on a carrier at sea. Once it enters service, the J-35 will massively bolster the potential of Chinese naval air forces, together with an increase in the number of Chinese carriers. With the introduction of the J-35, the Chinese Navy will move that much closer to match U.S. carrier forces.